This is a video of the Peplink Max HD1 dome with SIM injector. I'm going to be installing this on a boat and the pieces that I have with me here are the HD1 dome, SIM injector, a bunch of different mounting bits and pieces, the pass-through Ethernet piece which we'll talk about, and then the pole and or flat mounting bracket. You get everything that you see here if you order the package. You have to order the dome and the SIM injector. You can use the dome without the SIM injector, but that requires opening the dome and putting one or two SIMs in here, uh, which then means you have to take the dome down to get those SIMs out if you ever need to change them. Uh, in addition, this is a waterproof seal, so breaking that and going through that uh, is something you wanna try to avoid. This is the HD1 dome. Uh, which is a single radio dome. There is also an HD2 dome, uh, which has dual radios in it as well. This is the cat or category 18 version, so it's the latest uh, radio uh, and or modem that Pemplink is shipping. The dome itself, uh, this is the bottom of the dome, and you can see there's a bunch of different mounting holes here. There's uh, a status light over here, which is kind of hard to see. Uh, and then uh, underneath this cap is the Ethernet port and an additional status light uh, and a reset uh, button deep inside of there. The bottom of this has a rubber seal on it, uh, which will meet uh, up with this uh, piece if you want to use that, or it will be a seal up against a flat surface if you're mounting it. Um, with just the dome and nothing else. You can drill a hole about this size. This looks like probably an inch and a quarter or so uh, and mount the dome flat on a surface. On my boat I'm going to be using this uh, metal uh, adapter to mount it uh, on an arch instead and I am going to be using the uh, injector as a result of that or the pass-through piece. If you did want to mount this on a flat surface, it comes with these beautifully machined stainless steel nut and washer, which are really, really nice. So that would go underneath. You'd screw that on and it would stay on there. That's difficult for me, at least on the boat, to do because uh, I'm going into an arch that has a void in it. So I'd have to somehow drill an additional hole or cut a big hole to stick my hand up inside of that. So the dome itself is not very interesting. Uh, it's got a, you know, again, the flat spot on the top. Uh, it's not terribly heavy, uh, but you've got, of course, the status light over here and the status lights inside to see. So depending on how you have it wired or connected, you can see that. So that's the dome itself. The various different things that come with it are what kind of make it special. So if you want to power an additional device, you can use this um, add-on piece, which again, comes with it. Uh, and this fits right over the top here, like this, and screws down in, and all the hardware is included for that. Uh, and it has, inside of it, uh, a cable that plugs into the dome here, and then basically uh, a mini little switch or pass-through. So coming in would be your power from the SIM injector, would go right into here. And then coming out is an additional port that also has power over Ethernet on it that you could use to power another device, which is kind of nice. Uh, unfortunately, in my testing, it does not work with the Microtik Groove series. Uh, this is, I believe, 802.3AF, uh, and the Microtik needs a slightly different version. So uh, it would only be useful if maybe you wanted to set up a second dome uh, or something else that supports AF. But this is a really well-designed little piece to add on. Uh, and of course you get all the screws with it and it also comes with this little breather um, screw that sits in here so that uh, it looks like air and or pressure can kind of be equalized in, in here. So that screws right down on there. Uh, and then if you take this guy, he is the big universal bracket. So a lot of people will probably use it to put it on a pole. You can see the pole mounts there. And there are also two very large uh, uh, stainless steel clamps included with the kit, but I did not take them out because they're enormous and they'd get all over the place. So this will clamp or connect right into this uh, this add-on here, and then it's got several nice bolts 
that go right in here with um, thread locker on them already, which is nice, a nice touch. So that's how I'll end up mounting it. It will look something like this on the top of the boat. Um, and then I'll have those two ethernet ports available to me there. So we'll put that back down, get this out of the way. Um, actually, if we move this here, within these you have the two ethernet ports and they are weatherproofed. And in fact, they also give you a whole kit uh, to take uh, a normal ethernet cable, run it through these, put this little end on for uh, weatherproofing and then a nice stainless steel piece so that this whole thing can be weatherproofed from your outdoor Cat 5 right into this little guy. So that's one of the main reasons I'm using it. I don't want to cut a big hole to mount this. Plus, my arch is not perfectly flat, and this is very, very flat. So I'm going to be end, end up using this, this mounted on top of that, this mounted on top of that, and then the Ethernet connectors in here. So this whole thing runs off of PoE, and the thing that makes it possible is... Uh, this little SIM injector. Uh, this is not inexpensive. It's about $1,000 for this. The dome itself was also quite expensive. I can't remember the full cost. I think it was close to around $2,000 for the dome itself, which is uh, quite a bit when you think about, um, you know, buying a, a Peplink Max Transit as an example. But what you get with this piece is eight SIMs. You can see them all right there and you get four ethernet ports, all capable of powering PoE devices. So I've got a couple of SIMs populated now, I think it's one in three, um, but this is really nice because you can put this down below somewhere well out of the weather uh, and just run ethernet from here to the dome or rather to this piece, which goes into the dome. So that gives you a lot of options in terms of being able to run cable way further than running antenna cables from say a max transit. The, the only problem with this setup is that it requires, if you notice, 56 volts DC. And I don't know many boats that have that. Um, if you don't give it 48 volts or more, it will not generate a power over Ethernet signal, which means none of the integration works. You'll have to get a SIM injector beyond this one, which seems like even more cost. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be using a... Um, what's called a buck converter or DC to DC converter. And I'm going to take 12 volts and produce 48 volts out of that uh, and then power this guy. Uh, that will allow me to have basically the simplest configuration possible. One power supply coming into here or here rather. And this does have a block for DC power. Uh, and then an ethernet cable from here up to the dome. And then I will be using an ethernet cable from this to my max transit. You may ask why I'm using a Max Transit in addition to this, and the reason is this does not have any additional features other than being an LTE router. It doesn't have any physical ports other than the ones that are here. Uh, you can't connect to Wi-Fi and use Wi-Fi as WAN. You need a separate product for that. So since I already have a Max Transit in place, and that's been my primary for quite some time, uh, this is going to connect to the WAN port of the Max Transit, which seems a little weird, but it's it's pretty common with these deployments. Uh, you could use like a Balance 1 or a, a standard router. You don't have to use a Peplink router for it. And then maybe plug a MicroTik into it if you wanted to use Wi-Fi as WAN. This is a fantastic LTE device, but I find, especially like I'm sitting in my marina right now, I'm connected to Wi-Fi and and I am getting my internet signal from another Wi-Fi source. And you can't do that with this product. There's no Wi-Fi radios in this at all. Um, it doesn't even broadcast a local Wi-Fi signal. So if you want something on your boat that actually has a local Wi-Fi access point, you need to buy this and then something else to generate that. So that's why I'm using a Max Transit in combination with this. And you can see, this is not an inexpensive way to get internet. By the time you've added all this up, you're in the $3,000 range for everything. However, what this solves and what this brings that a Max Transit with antennas uh, doesn't have is the radios and everything for those signals are already outside. They're as close as they're going to get to the cell phone provider. And in my initial testing of this already, I'm seeing much better signal levels from this than 
you know, the highest quality pointing antenna with the shortest uh, Ultraflex LMR400 cable to a Max Transit. And you would expect that because this is probably the same radio they use in the Max Transit, but this is outside and there's nothing causing signal loss uh, in the cable or in the antenna. Uh, it's directly right in here. Again, the downside is this has no Wi-Fi access point in it. You can't gather or grab remote Wi-Fi signals and use Wi-Fi as WAN. So this is clearly for somebody who wants a very, very high quality signal that's willing um, to also add a couple other pieces. It is very, very nice for things like sailboats and, and stuff like that where you don't have room for eight antennas or other things outdoors and you want to use Ethernet. That's probably the biggest differentiator for this is being able to use just a plain old Ethernet cable to connect into the dome and power it. You do not need the SIM injector. Um, I mentioned it at the beginning. You can put SIMs directly in here if you want, but that does require opening this up. However, if you don't hardly ever need to change them and you're just constantly using it, that's totally a, a viable option. That saves you $1,000 from having to buy the SIM injector. Uh, and then all you would need is something to generate uh, PoE power. I use Tycon. Uh, they make a bunch of different uh, PoE injectors. I don't have one here right now, but uh, that will go from 12 volts all the way up to 48 volts and do the different uh, types. They do have an AT one. I think it's about 60 bucks or so. Uh, and it would, or AF, can't remember which one of this is, AF, AT, whichever one. Uh, and it will work with this as well. I, I did test it and it seemed to be, seemed to be fine. So there's a lot of other pieces with this that I'm not going to be using. There's uh, the whole kit for mounting it on a, on a pole, some extra screws, which you could use to mount that bracket through something um, with nuts and, and washers. So you basically have everything you need here. The only thing you need beyond this, of course, is Ethernet cable. Uh, you should use outdoor rated plenum cable uh, and uh, something to crimp ends on it because you will have to do that to get the ends through these little guys. Uh, you can't just shove a cable through that. Um, so uh, my testing has been ongoing for a while. I, I did uh, some testing and then I've taken this down to do a, a bit of adjustment. Uh, and like I said so far, it's been absolutely fantastic when it comes to um, the signal quality of this versus a max transit, uh, but it does come at a cost. It does require a bit more pieces. It's a little bit more complicated to have a full system, but it's simpler to have this part of the system, if that makes sense. Um, uh, and you do need to buy um, some sort of a, a power converter if you're going to run this off your boat off of DC power. They do give you this enormous 56 volt power supply, but I'm not going to plug that into AC power and have that running all the time. So that's the Peplink Max HD1 Dome with SIM injector. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks.